Well, hello, welcome. As you said, my name is Caitlin. Um, so our project over the past two semesters has been the effects of COVID-19 in the education system. So in 2021, the CDC released a statistic that says 16.9 million children from the ages of two to seven have been diagnosed with a mental health disorder. And then also 81% of teenagers have experienced intense stress during this pandemic. So oh, as you all probably know from your personal experience, we have experienced a completely different education system through this pandemic. We have experienced different uh, different problems and different just challenges that, we, that we've had to face. And as we saw the statistic, we started thinking, what is our why? Why do we want to research this topic? We realized that we've all experienced something different with mental health. It has become a more popular topic among our personal lives and in the education system. Alrighty, so to start us off, um, we were giving a research project. We had a couple lists of different ideas. We thought that mental health was a big um, issue going around it going on in our society um, so our process started with choosing our topic um, then we met with our current librarian at our school to figure out where we needed to start uh, we found 15 different articles five articles each about the mental health and how COVID has affected that um, in our education system then we started off with a lit literature matrix based on our different themes that we pulled from those articles um, our fifth step was our research paper, as well as a poster that we put together with all of our statistics, as well as the different information we found. Um, the sixth step was the service learning project to kind of pull in that real world experience um, with the mental health of our students, our faculty, as well as the um, whole education system as the whole. And then our seventh step was adding our themes and new content. We got a new member in our group, so we added another theme into it as well. And then now we are here today. All right, so our overall question that we were asking ourselves throughout presenting is how, our, how COVID-19 has affected our education system as a whole, not only students, but staff as well. And so this is just a brief summary of what she mentioned earlier about our literature matrix. So what we basically did was with each source we got, we kind of summarized each one, getting the information that we wanted to talk about in our uh, project. So we have the theme, the articles, the summaries with our citations from the articles that we got, and then our gaps. So also, we were trying to get a QR code so you could view all of our work. So imagine just this, but add like 20 more articles onto this, and it's just every single article has an has its uh, theme and then the title and the summary citation and then the gaps that we found in those articles there's the QR code all right and we did come up with six overall themes for um, our project which uh, involves students overall emotional well-being uh, teachers also like their emotional well-being uh, college students being unmotivated to finish their degrees the impact of COVID-19 on marginalized communities' mental health, school staff just not feeling equipped overall during the pandemic, and teachers and staff leading the profession overall. All right, so we have our theme one, which is about the students have felt an increase in emotional symptoms. The educators, students, and their families have experienced several different challenges, including increased stress, apprehensiveness that has led to mental health illness, intense isolation, economic stress, loss of um, profoundly relished uh, ones and other struggles during the pandemic have contributed to ascending mental health issues like stress and sadness. So right here we found a few uh, data that they had gathered for uh, all students overall, college students and high school students. So it went through stress or anxiety, disappointment and sadness, loneliness or isolation, financial <clears throat> setback, relocation, illness, and loss of a loved one, and then none of the above. And as you can tell, the everything that we've dealt with mentally has been at a very, very high rate. And then for this one is uh, teachers have felt an increase in emotional symptoms. Results show that COVID-19 was associated with an increased risk of mental health disorders, including anxiety, depression, substance use, sleep dep de deprivation, up to a year after infection. So these are another things that we pulled up. We have a survey finding, proportion of teachers reporting symptoms of depression by school learning model. So we have remote virtual, which is 
really popular right now. A hybrid, both in person and online, and then in person. You can see how high the virtual is up here. 31% experienced symptoms of depression whenever we went virtual. And on the your left side, it talks about how more than half of the teachers said they were considering leaving the field or retiring more now than ever uh, since the pandemic. And then at the bottom, it talks about teachers thinking about leaving the profession. And it gives you a percentage on the experience, uh, whatever they've experienced symptoms or depression, and then they experience symptoms of depression. So it's 18%, the same or less, and the other one, 35%. So increased thoughts of leaving profession, retiring were associated with higher proportions of depression compared to other teachers. Teachers at schools where students are back 100% in person report symptoms of depression and anxiety at lower proportions than those still teaching partially or fully. Alrighty, so I took a look at our college students because us as college students, um, I know I felt very unmotivated when we first went on to um, completely online. It was a whole different world for about all of us, having to go completely a community as a whole to by yourself at home trying to get through those online classes. Um, so a main thing was the school closures that affected their mental health. Um, I found on a survey saying that 22.9% were taking a gap year or time off from school. 31.8% uh, needed that support from their family. Um, but having to be alone, isolated was a huge um, issue. So that comes to about half of our students no longer focusing on their future studies due to the pandemic um, and the mental toll that they had. About 61% of students struggled that semester off when we first started um, the pandemic. So I can only imagine how it is now with the um, studies that we have gained. Um, the loss of community was a big issue and not having that support system is um, what made the college students unmotivated as a whole. Um, so the next one is our marginalized communities. Those are communities, um, it's individuals excluded from the mainstream social, economic, and education life occurs due to the unequal power relationship between social groups. So those are groups that have been st struggling from the beginning that didn't have the uh, financial needs or equipped with the proper resources to sustain their needs during the pandemic. So they were already occurring with issues from the start that now they um, have gained the more stress, the grief, the financial insecurities, and also the hardships. Um, the first graph is talking about the death toll. So imagine um, having to finish college with the loss of a loved one or, um, uh, and then the next one is the depression disorder during COVID by race and ethnicity. I also found that um, suicide feelings and thoughts were also a big issue with this community. Um, nearly one in five people had those thoughts or feelings. 16% of those were the um, individuals that are in indigenous. 14% of those are individuals with disabilities, as well as the in uh, individuals who identify as LGB. TQ plus. So our fifth theme is that school staff do not feel equipped. So fun fact, California only requires that teachers complete one mental health training. And the mental health training isn't even really, it is mental health, it is more geared towards school shootings and identifying whether a student is experiencing something at home, whether they cause herself some harm or others around them. Anything else is up to the school district or the school specifically, and it's required of teachers to do it outside of their regular school time. So teachers are not being compensated for it, and they're also having to do it on top of what they already have to do. So this one right here, this is a uh, this is a survey taken from Salt Lake City in Utah, and the statement is, "I feel un I feel equipped to deal with my students' mental health challenges." Fifty eight point thirteen percent disagree with that statement. And then right here, this is from the Better Teacher Project. This is a teacher who has become uh, very famous on Instagram. 
she doesn't really reveal her name or uh, she reveals her face, but she doesn't reveal her school or anything like that, just for privacy. But she made a statement a while back that said, I'm three seconds away from crying, and I don't even know why. My heart is so heavy carrying the weight of my students' grief and struggles on top of my own. I need to reach through the screen and hug them. I need to tell them that yes, it sucks, but it will be over soon, but I can't. I have no idea when we'll be allowed to be back in person. So just from the articles that I found, it just became really apparent that people, the teachers are struggling to support their students because they don't know how. They never really had to encounter anything like this until the pandemic came to be about. All right, so because of this pandemic, obviously we have all felt a wave of emotions, mental health, and just not feeling prepared because we've moved all to online instead of seeing each other face to face. So this is why some teachers have decided to leave the profession. I actually observed a teacher, uh, I believe last week, and I talked to her a little bit about how she felt during the pandemic. She's a second grade teacher and she said that in all of her 18 years of teaching, she has never felt the amount of stress that she did during the start of the pandemic. So if you look on the graphs over here, about 90% of educators say that they were experiencing burnout and 55% of educators said that they plan to leave the education system earlier than what they planned. And also this, ha this also has a lot to do with substitutes. Because these teachers are leaving the profession earlier or they're not showing up due to sickness and the pandemic, Substitutes are very vital in this situation, but because most substitutes are retired teachers, they're more prone to the virus, so they're not being able to do their job and substitute for these schools. So substitutes are, again, at, they are at risk, and there is also a low pay. So this is also very unmotivating in a way because you there is a pandemic going on, and these substitutes aren't getting the pay that they're asking for because there is such a need for them. Labor statistics, the median wage for the working short term is only $14.12 and school districts have had to increase due to the significant need for them. So concluding our presentation, um, some just main points that we have found that we kind of want to reiterate is that schools need to begin to prioritize staff training, but also prioritize their staff's mental health. So to fix this, we really think that school districts need to start implementing mental health coordinators. So we saw this in a, an experiment in Australia. It was in Victoria, Australia. They implemented uh, well-being coordinators into primary schools. So for the US, that's like elementary. And they had them conduct trainings for both uh, for their teachers' mental health, for them, for them specifically, but also to teach them how to deal with their students' mental health as well. And then secondly, schools should incorporate peaceful meditative activities. So this could be through meditations or implementing a uh, little uh, like areas for their students to learn how to calm themselves down. Uh, so like calm corners, that's one uh, big thing that we've seen. And then teachers need to be given more support by their admin. And this could be through extra lesson plan time or mental health check-ins and even raises. So there's a lady named subbing superintendent. She is on TikTok, she doesn't give away her name, but she has started going around and subbing in her own school district just to show support. And she's allowed black stress code and she has provided uh, little gifts and knickknacks for her staff and then providing better and more effective resources for all members of society to improve their mental health. So examples are like this or trainings or just resources in general. It's not just in schools, but it needs to be in our country, like our country and our entire world. It's mental health has become so important over the past two years and the entire world just needs to do a better job. Some gaps that we found is that we are still in a pandemic. So because of this, a lot of the studies that we have found are not finished and don't have a definite conclusion. And it has left a lot of our questions on cliffhangers and information is also changing daily because everything is changing and every time you look at a news headline, there's possibly a new uh, variant of COVID-19. Sorry. All right, so we have our future studies. As a group, we are committed to further this research, whether it is through checking on studies that have yet to finish observing classes or even trying different things in our own classroom. We believe that it is important because oh, it is an important cause and will continue to advocate it. In the next coming weeks of this semester, our group will be going will be going to conduct what we call a post-it note project. This will entail a group of high school students having five to ten minutes to write something kind to their teachers on a post-it note. After they have written on them, we plan to go and put them on, on their teachers' doors after they have all left for the weekend. 
When they come back, they will come to find a large amount of time and encouraging words on the doors. So we're doing the service project because last semester we focused on students and we went to Escolita. Thank you for listening to our presentation. The effects of COVID-19 on mental health to using students. I was curious on what your opinion was on what was more influential, the physical effects of COVID-19 on humans or the change needed to go completely digital? Which one was more effective? Yeah. Which one was more effective? Which one was more influential on the, on the mental health? Mm -hmm. Was it the physical aspects of the disease? Or was it the mental aspects of having to go completely digital uh, on, on, on command, basically? I would definitely say that's kind of, if, if that's 50-50, but I, I would say more digital, right? Because honestly, more I, I think it depends on the person and how they encounter the disease, but the experiences they have with it. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, obviously, some, some school systems didn't really uh, go as harsh on their uh, COVID-19 protocols, so a lot of them, some schools had more access to their school life, you could say, and in some were like, I guess, um, yeah, so for example, Houston, they were really strict with their COVID-19 protocols, and then New York City, very, very strict. Um, I think they took it, I think, I, I think it just depends really on what their experiences was. And does that answer, is, uh, am I understanding it correctly? I feel like I'm, you just know. Okay. <laughs> definitely, I think it would have been more digital because it would isolate the people actually experiencing who they really are. So you're isolated by yourself and you don't have your peers to say, oh, I, he likes that, let me try it. Oh, maybe I like that too. And I'm not able to talk to people or they're having to by themselves. They have their family too, but you need friends. And of course, this is y'all's opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I think in both ways, physical and digitally, you, and digitally, you face a sense of isolation because if you're feeling like a physical of COVID-19, you're quarantining for two weeks, but when you're digital, you're not having any physical interaction with people, just through a screen, and most, like, you know, we've, I think we've all experienced Zoom calls, like, it's very rare to talk or show your face in a classroom on Zoom, so I think it's just that sense of isolation both ways. Thank you. Oh, uh, I saw his name first. <laughs> I have a question uh, for the same group. Um, what do you guys think the ramifications of uh, the mental health um, effects of COVID-19 are going to be with uh, the generation growing up, kids ages, uh, you know, zero to really eight? You know, that's a very... Um, I actually, I went to observe a group of seventh graders this past week, and honestly, I was talking to some teachers, and they said that a lot of these students whenever they first came back from virtual, they didn't know how to talk to people. They didn't know how to interact. So um, it's, I think the social part of their lives was kind of just cut off at a very early age. So they're having to learn that at a later stage in life than what we're used to. So I think social like interaction is going to uh, change a lot with the younger group. They rely mostly on that technology that they were used to from the beginning. Yeah, that's I mean, uh, I, I'm a substitute so I, I see different grade levels, and I mainly do like seventh and eighth grade, and I realize a lot of seventh and eighth graders still have the education of a fourth grade education. So definitely not. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll I'll speak for me personally real quick. Um, the thing that I found most interesting from our research is just how many teachers are leaving and what they're experiencing. Honestly, it did make me question my. Uh, I was curious if all of you are education majors. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, it definitely made me question my career path. Uh, I'm a senior in high school right now, so I really, I have some big decisions to make from in becoming a future, and I was really debating whether I wanted to go into education or not. Um, it did make me question, so I'm debating whether I'm going to go into education or uh, social work. But yeah. If we have a chance, and we may kind of end up with time, I, I'd love to hear elaboration on what specifically make you is making you question. But when we'll hear from yes. you. Um, I definitely, it again made me feel like I have two more years to get my bachelor's and become a teacher. 
and I'm afraid what is it going to look like once I get that teaching uh, license? Like, is it going to get better? Is it going to get worse? Everyone, everyone's leaving. I work at schools where they're telling me we get no support, and um, and I'm, I'm kind of like freaking out. Like, I mean, am I going to have support? Am I going to feel this way? And exactly that. I feel like this has definitely helped a lot because now I'm aware of learning and hopefully I can do something to make a change so by the time I become a teacher and younger people who want to become a teacher have a better pathway able to right, anticipate yeah. issues. What surprised me was the lack of support that some school districts are giving their teachers. Mm -hmm. we, it, the pen, we've never gone through a pandemic before. So, of course, school districts are like, what do we do? Like, how are we going to do this? But as it goes on, I've noticed that with some school districts, they are giving little to no support on how to help these kids and how to help themselves at all, too. So, um, I, have, I know a teacher that lives in like East Texas where they have not received any type of training or support through this pandemic. Whenever they get some cases, they shut down the school overall and have to go completely virtual over and over again. So the switch is just so confusing. Yeah. Um, so my interesting point that I learned is the fact that people are just giving up. Mm -hmm. Like the, looking into the college students, I mean, people are, you've gone so far in your future and you, have goals to get this degree and become for us educators, but with this pandemic, pandemic it kind of wrote soft for them. So I thought that was very interesting as well, as well as the support systems. Yeah, and, and I suppose your work shows that that roadblock is being faced by all of the different stakeholders the <laughs> young children, the teachers, the administrators, the, and the students that are the college students. Thank you. Sure.